Hello, everyone. Anything to anybody? Hello. Hello. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. I'm here with Tim and Greg from Silver Liberties. Guys, how are you doing today? I'm well. doing fantastic. I'm Greg, head trader here. It's my brother, Tim. How you doing today, Dave? Good, good, buddy. Hey, um, okay, so we're, we've gone back and forth over the last couple months about, you know, these are, these are pretty spooky times, and whether – whether uh, we, none of us know what's going to happen, but I think what we've seen around the world is that it, it makes sense to, to have some preparation in, in advance. And I think that's what we wanted to talk about today. Am I correct? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think it'd be great. Uh, before I start, I just want to say happy Memorial Day to everybody. Also, I think if you were to combine David's uh, flow there on the top of his head with Tim's sweet beard there. We have a multi-million dollar hair club for men uh, advertisement going on right now. <laughs> yeah, it comes off too. <laughs> yeah, you can no, I'm going to get grayer from here. Yeah, um, I, I'm, yeah I, I'd love to talk about prepping. Um, and I, I just wanted to first say too, um, you know, it's Memorial Day. Okay, We're about to talk about maybe some not so happy things and just for anyone out that's listening tim and i aren't like the crazy you gotta live in a bunker type prepper i mean maybe ultimately that is the best course of action but that's not where my head is at and um we're kind of just i think just going to kind of talk through what the average person you know can do just to kind of to, to kind of help themselves as we witnessed through 2020 just with COVID. um you know there's a big toilet paper shortage and Tim and I were already prepared for that because if you study history, um, one of the first items that goes out of stock uh, in a, some type of calamity is actually toilet paper. So the news was making fun of it. It's happened hundreds and hundreds of times throughout history. Yeah, the number one thing that was traded when the Soviet Union collapsed uh, was like things like Pepto-Bismol. Yeah, for Stomach problems. Mm -hmm. That was huge. Imodium. Emodium. Because yeah. people were eating stuff that wasn't processed properly or what they were accustomed to. So they had a lot of stomach issues. You may want to get some of that stuff. If, if you guys are okay with it, um, I'm not uh, affiliated with it. I don't know if that's, you can see that there. I'm not affiliated with this. I don't sell it or anything. It's just a book I bought a while ago. It's called Prepper's Long-Term Survival Guide. I, I love to read uh, and I learn a lot from that. And I just kind of wanted to point out in the first chapter on page eight. So this guy kind of just talks about throughout human history, things that could potentially go wrong to cause the need for prepping. So again, I'm not sure if you can see this. This book was written in 2014. Very first thing he talks about is pandemics, right? So you scroll forward a page or two. Next one there is famine, which everybody is now talking about. And then the third one, and Tim just mentioned Russia. And if you guys are cool with it, I want to just kind of read this for a second. The third one is economic collapse, where, you know, Tim and I have spent a, a large portion of the last 10 years really kind of studying. And I know you have too, Dave. So give me a second here. I'll just read through this. But it says, of the various types of long-term disasters, perhaps the most difficult to define is the economic collapse. Many situations would fall under this umbrella, such as hyperinflation. Hmm. Um, or largely economic depression resulting in mass bankruptcies and high unemployment. No matter the cause, one, one thing almost all economic collapses have in common is mass civil unrest. Now, Tim will probably maybe do a little deeper dive on this because that's he, he's got a lot of experience there. In 1998, Russia experienced an economic collapse that resulted in bank closures and mass runs on basic commodities which we are seeing here in the United States. Inflation rose to about 84%. By comparison, the United States currently averages around 1.6%. Again, this is written in 2014. Prices for food went up almost 100%. I want to talk about that because I'm flipping eggs right now, and we'll, 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 we'll get into that. While at the same time, the ruble decreased in value. Millions of people saw their entire life savings disappear as banks failed. Last paragraph here. Those Russians living in urban areas were the worst off with no homegrown crops to sustain them. They were forced to stand in long lines for the, me for the most meager of supplies. The elderly living on pensions suddenly found the much needed money completely cut off. Hospitals were also affected seeing massive reductions in already scarce drug supplies. And again, that book is called Prepper's Long-Term Survival Guide. Um, but there's millions of books you know, written about the subject. 
where you guys want to start? What do you, uh, Dave, what's, uh, what, what are you doing to prep? What are, what are your top, say, two, three items in your house? And this is why uh, I have the saying, life is what happens when you're making other plans. Mm -hmm. Because you just, even though you have the best plan, if you had asked me a year ago, if I was going to be sitting right here, wouldn't even been on my radar. Wouldn't even been on my radar. That's mm -hmm. how quickly things can change. It really can. Yeah. Dave, yeah. are you going to, after you finish up everything there, are you going to head down to Mexico or are you going to stay there for a while? Well, I, I'm a little bit, um, I'm a little bit up in the air as far as what I'm going to do, because now, you know, compared to a year ago, I think our situation right now in our country, especially when you have our glorious leader saying he's going to defend Taiwan and he's going to take out Putin. I mean, what, what is this dude thinking? I mean, you know, I mean, this is real. This is real. I mean, the, these people in the other part of the world, if you put them in a corner, they will strike. They will strike. I mean, look at history. I mean, you, you guys know much about the Korean War and how MacArthur was like, I know the Asian mind. And he kept talking and talking. Yeah. And China was like, here they came. Yeah, I like to speak kind of like in analogies or whatnot. But I feel like what we do just with our kind of domestic policy, it's like having a caged lion or tiger. And then we just sit there with a stick, just poke at it and poke at it and poke at it. When the lion or tiger finally like swipes at you, we go, all right, now you're a bad tiger. And then we attack it. Um, you know, and it's, you know, Tim and I've spent a lot of our, a lot of our videos, a lot of our time on our Patreon channel talking about economics. So, I mean, we're kind of focused more on the economic front. We, we're, we have no real power um, to stop, you know, us going and bombing other countries. I mean, I don't really know how you, how you stop that, uh, but it does cause inflation and things like that. So, I mean, some of the things I've really been trying to do as a guy that is very worried about the economic climate. Um, I don't Can believe... I just say one thing? Yes. So, uh, uh, so my answer is what I've said to all my family and friends, vote with your feet, get out mm -hmm. there, do recon, get your boots on the ground and find someplace else to go. Because I think the United States is going to be ground zero. So I, you could prepare all you want. Let's say you have all the firearms and all the food. Those mm -hmm. gangs, when they start roaming, you know, I'm not sure you're going to be able to keep what you prepped with, right? And if you don't have, you don't have a lifeboat, you're stuck here. Yeah, I mean, we kind of, we did like a little pre-interview. Um, and of the three of us, I mean, in my personal life, most people think I'm, I have a very negative mindset for where the U.S. economy is going. Um, and, you know, Dave, I'm not, I'm not trying to rip into you because you might be, you might end up being correct. You're more bearish than I am. So I think we're going to have a economic crisis, a fiat currency crisis, but I don't think we're going back into the dark ages. Now, if I'm wrong there, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Um, I just don't see it, but it is very possible. So, you know, well, like this book, that book, you're familiar that, with the Deagle report, right? The Deagle report, the only country that are, it forecasts in 2025 of a population uh, explode, uh, basically uh, falling down is the United States is where they had 100 million people forecast for 2025. And where yeah, I've, I've right seen now. that it's that's uh, it's pretty grim. Well, again, right. So like, I mean, going back to this book, like these guys are talking about major, major collapse. Right. So, I mean, if you are in that mindset that you're going to have a major, major collapse, I mean, you want to be whether it is leaving the U.S. or going and buying farmland, which I am actively uh, looking at right now, living in Colorado with housing spiking, I think, out of control. Uh, the value is no longer here where I can go to the Midwest and for literally 100 or 200,000 less, uh, you know, pick up a 20 acre farm with a house on it. But again, so, I mean, if you guys want to, if we want to go into kind of the long-term prepping, we can, but I don't think the three of us are even, I don't think we're even qualified to really talk about because none of us are doing it. So I'm kind of in the mindset, I'm thinking more fiscal collapse. What can I do at least to buy myself a few weeks to a few months with prepping I'm doing in my house? So that's kind of where I'm at. So well, maybe I can just give off a quick little list of things I'm doing and then you guys can jump in. And I know Tim and I have share the same mindset, but we're slightly different with our prepping. So for me, the main thing is kind of food. Um, and I've shared this kind of in our Patreon site. And I was telling people you can flip these. 
my camera keeps going off there. This is just some like long-term uh, egg storage. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I think it's a gussin or a gas, and I'm not even sure how to pronounce the, the farm there. Um, but I bought these off of Amazon on April 4th, I believe it was, uh, for $33. The cheapest you can get them now is 90. If you go to the, the website's own, or like the, 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 the company's website, they have them listed at 115 and they're sold out and they've been that way for a while. So I think you do absolutely need to get some form of long-term food storage. If for nothing else, like in 2020, if you had some toilet paper, you just didn't have to go out and join the crowds where someone's willing to punch you in the face, you know, to get some toilet paper. I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on food? Where are you guys at with, I mean, do you guys have any? If you look at a country that's collapsed, right? Venezuela, mm -hmm. take that example. Right now it's illegal to trade US dollars in Venezuela. Guess what the people are taking the shopkeeps? They're taking US dollars. So even though it collapsed, like it, people find a way and it's still moving on as life is normal. And you can watch people all day long on the internet going and buying basic goods with a couple bucks. You go go to the shop and buy beers. Now they have a lot of stuff all boarded up because of all the crime and things like that. It's transpired, and they probably don't have firearms. Um, but yeah, like even if it collapses, that I think we'll find a way. You know? Do are you guys are you guys prepping with food or I mean? So I have I should have just probably grabbed a picture. I have um, so I have a small garden, uh, but I have over thirty thousand heirloom seeds. Um, because I am contemplating buying a land. Um, I have long-term food storage, um, multiples. I've got protein, um, lots of like chicken and stuff. And I think it was Tim mentioned it earlier too. It's not, my hope isn't that I'm just going to sit there and live off of that stuff. Cause I think it'll wreck, wreck your guts. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not the healthiest food you're ever going to eat, but I'd rather eat that than than nothing. I mean, what are you guys doing for food? I mean, well, food and that, water think, are your major, major things right away. Shelter and then food and water, right? Well, bingo. And and the, having a time frame in mind, I, I think I think three months. I mean, who can think past three months? But I mean, it's not. I don't think it's super difficult to get, you know, two or three months worth of food and in, into your house. No, because it, it would cost you a couple hundred you, bucks. Yeah, especially if you go to reduce consumption at that time. Um, water, I think, is going to be more important. I think you need to have water filters. Do you guys okay. have water, water filters? At your oh, house? absolutely. That's okay. an, that's more important. How, how much food. water do you have? I mean, I, I don't remember the exact stat. I think the average four-person family uses like 100 gallons a day. Did you know yeah. that? Like to shower and wash your clothes and wash the dishes. Yeah. yeah all that stuff would be out the window. Oh, right. Yeah. Like it'd just be about having enough to stay basic clean and drinking water. Correct. Yeah. Do you guys store water? You have water. I mean, what are you, what are you doing? Long story short, have some water, but don't have three months worth of water. I have water filters. Mm -hmm. So that okay. worst case scenario, I'll go down to the river and take it right out of the yeah. river. Okay. Oh, well, that, I mean, you have a water uh, supply, you have a, a place you can get water supply, yes. right? Yeah. 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 Do you but, tell, uh, I mean, you got water all over there where you're at. Yeah. I've got a fair amount of bottled water and then it rains a lot in Florida. So then I have a any... filtration system after that. Do you have any ability to capture the water? And are you allowed to in Florida? Are there any rules on that? No, not, no, not that okay. I'm aware of and not like it would matter at that time, right? That's, yeah, well, that's probably true, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for me, I have, I just went to the store and I bought those big five gallon jugs and I got five of them. So I got, I have 25 gallons of water, right? I mean, again, yeah, if it's the average family's using a hundred, I've never actually calculated it. And I, that stat might be a little bit off. It would be drinking. I'm sure that would last me a little bit. And there are rivers and ponds here. And I have small filtration stuff, but I also went out and bought a huge, I actually bought it to uh, brew beer a while ago, but I held on to it literally for prepping. It's a big five gallon stainless steel uh, tub with a spout on it. And, you know, I could easily just go fill that thing up and I could put it on my stove or, you know, you know I could, I could boil that fairly easily. Yeah, and if there's an emergency, people, if you have a bathtub, fill your bathtub. Remember, you can drink the water out of the bat, out of your toilet collector there, the um, the bin. That's at the back. Yeah, there, yeah. There's there's several gallons right there in an emergency that nobody's thinking about. 
you can take your garbage cans and fill those. That's normally water. where I drink my water from. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are these are things. Even your hot water heater, you can go down there and drink mm. out of that if you have to. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah, it's a stored heater. That yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's for some people. That's forty gallons. So there are places. Yeah that you can, in emergency, you know, once you hear this stuff going on, you can start taking all your pots and pans, filling them as quickly as you can. Um, and as far as food, you know, I think one of the least expensive ways for long-term, it's on your idea of powder, Greg, but just protein powder. You can buy a, oh you can gosh, buy yeah. a couple yeah. pounds of protein powder for like 20, 30 bucks. Yeah, and it lasts at least like a couple years. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Yeah, yeah I also like, uh, chunky soup now the mm -hmm. price of those have been Absolutely. going up but yeah it's two bucks a can now yeah you've been buying that you've been buying more and more of that tim right you've been kind of texting me like i went and bought 40 cans of blah 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 yeah, in my area right now it's roughly around three dollars a can um for soup for chunky soup now it's a and little I, bit higher quality but and think about it you've got your, actually you, eat. and you have your fluids in that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and you get protein so it's actually got like ground up beef or sausage chicken whatever you're looking for but it's it's, it's going up it, so yeah yeah cans of chicken noodle soup get a hundred cans of chicken noodle soup there's a hundred bucks and, you're and you know that that would be you could use those to barter too i just just thinking that right now the cans are good ideas you guys have so i also have a freezer with meat in it i've been stocking that up for the last couple of years and i have a uh, small barbecue uh, burner where I bought extra uh, fuel for it. And I bought extra cans of fuel for my bigger barbecue. Well, I think in terms of uh, electricity is going to be out. So um, yeah, that may whatever. just, yeah, it might unthaw. Yeah. I mean, not so, much. I, well, e even to that, just to get a couple extra days, kind of to Tim's point, um, I took a bunch of bottled water and two gallon jugs of milk. I filled them all up with water threw them in the bottom of my freezer. So if electrical grid yeah. goes down, at least those will then act as uh, ice to keep it cold probably another day or two. And then worst case scenario, I can drink those. Yep. Um, it, it's the same thing with your fuels too. Like I would top off on your charcoal. I'd make sure to have extra can of propane. And uh, I'd yeah, make sure I'd, you yeah. got your, uh, your cars filled up too. Like I wouldn't let them get past half a tank right now. We had a couple of days in uh, 2020 where the fuel pumps around here went empty so and that was a couple of days really? right yeah I that was that. i don't i don't remember was... you telling me that Ugh. uh I, we did not see that in colorado yeah i'm, I'm if if the, if anything goes down the last place i want to be is on the road to be honest with you uh you yeah, remember I mean, the scene yeah. you remember the scene from war of the worlds with tom cruise when he's driving and, you know, I they, don't, they, but remind they, me. It's been so well, long they, since I've seen it. Anybody in a vehicle was targeted. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, because you're probably moving with goods. Yeah, whether you're trying to, you know, go cross-country to family. So that's an interesting point. Why don't we just go on to fuel? So, I mean, my thing is I have a lot of family in the Midwest. So it's about eight, eight, nine hundred 900 miles from where I live. Um, I have enough gas stored up. I just buy the big five gallon tanks. I put stable in there and I put a sticky note on it the day that I filled them up so that I know to use that gas um, before it goes bad. But I have enough gas to get from here to the Midwest without having to stop at a gas station. Now, granted, that doesn't mean someone's not going to have a roadblock up and points the gun at me, right? Give me all your stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do have that option if, if needed, if gas were to go bad. And there's a lot of the stuff I'm doing does not cost much money. Actually, if anything else too, um, like using the cans of soup, like Tim was saying, because inflation is so bad, if you actually want to consume that just to save a little bit of money. You can, I mean, the gas that I filled up last year, you know, it's already up a hundred percent. Um, let's see. Do you guys have, are you guys storing like a, a gas at all? Do you Tim? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've been doing that forever. It, it's kind of a pain, but um, Wait, what do you just you just store it with gas cans or what do you? So I keep it in there for about three months. I've got uh, some plastic ones and some some actual metal containers, mm. and I just rotate it through. I use about three months. I don't even use a stabilizer. You're just three, using it constantly, yeah. Yeah, it's three months. It's fine. And I, uh, how much do you have if you don't if you don't mind saying? Just curious. Uh, Enough to fill up around eight gallons. Okay, eight, no more than eight gallons. 
So I, mean, I, would, I would recommend you get enough just to fill up your car at least, you know, get yourself. I don't know where your cars take, but maybe your truck yeah. or something, you know, get 15 gallons or just in case. Uh, and, and all this is for like, say you, you're uh, running a quarter tank, right? And then you got to drive your car for two days when we didn't have fuel in the pumps. Well, what happens if it just turned out to be a week? Like, I'm not talking about marauders and stuff. I'm just saying like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You don't you know, have gas can't get for, to work for a week. And then what, what do you do? Got to go pick up the kids or something like that. But ah, these, these, are, these are issues that you got a bicycle. Uh, I don't have a bicycle right now. Something I need to get. That, that might be some, Yeah. So I'm just, just thinking out loud. We were actually talking about bikes this morning, but um, uh, yeah, I've got bikes too. I just, I hadn't even had that thought really Tim, because we haven't, um, we not run out of fuel. I don't remember you telling me that either. That's kind of, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's like one of the things I think is more apt to happen in the U S is we're not going to Venezuela style collapse. And again, I could be totally wrong. I think it's more apt what Tim just said, Hey, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's 2024, 20, it's June. Uh, you guys don't have gas for the next 15 days, like, and go right. Like <laughs> I yeah, think it's more, gonna be more likely like that. Yeah. Or, 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 or diesel. Yeah. So 93 went out here first, all the premium went, you couldn't find it. And then it trickled down to 87. Mm. And so since I drive a truck, it was just hitting up my 87, but it wasn't as bad if I was driving like a nice Mercedes, right? Like those people got hit real quick. I mean, look at, look at baby formula, right? Kind of to that, to that point. So baby formula will come back in stock, but if you got a baby and you can't feed it, like that's a massive problem, right? Um, let's see here. You got anything to add to that, Dave? Yeah, the, the only, well, about fuel, no, but about uh, food. The other thing, if you have the ability, you know, getting six, 10, 15 chickens in your backyard might mm. not be a bad idea. No, I think that's an exceptionally good idea right now because with the chickens too, like where I'm at with my HOA, I'm not allowed to do that. I got to get out of this area. Um, chickens, if nothing else, you could just give the eggs to your neighbors, you know, like to add or help the community, you could sell them and then you can consume them yourself. I mean, there is going to be a point where you get sick of eating eggs, but so you could, you know, trade them for gas or something. I think chickens are a great idea. I have friends that are doing that out here. Lots of them actually. Yeah. It's something I'm planning to do right now, actually. Yeah. Free ranging eggs. I mean, they're, it's about as healthy as you're going to get. Yeah. I just got to, have my dogs not go after them. That'll be a, a fun training. You put up some fencing. It should be totally fine. They can't get in there. Yeah, good thing. Um, your, do your dogs will keep the uh, fox away. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, let's see. I, I'm just kind of going through the table of contents of this uh, book here, too. Um, you know, we already kind of mentioned this is medicines. Are you guys keeping medicines on hand? The basics. Yeah, a lot of Pepto, uh, yeah. Tums. Um, this basic things like that. A lot of teas, a lot of herbs, just for, if you have upset stomach, I mean, it'd be just horrendous if your kids are uh, having sort of issues. So. so, yeah. So what Tim kind of said earlier, if you've studied, this is my nerd, nerd butt does on Friday nights, I study world history from a financial lens. And if you go back through collapses or even like going on today with Venezuela and stuff, and again, Tim kind of mentioned it, but it's a lot of stuff that's stomach related. Um, and or it's really dehydration. So like if you study the 1980s Russian collapse, people were dying, not because of marauders, not because of gangs, not because they couldn't get food, you know, not because their currency went to garbage. I mean, it did, but people were dying of dehydration. So um, Imodium, which I have tons of, <laughs> you know, these things you can get for like a dollar or two. I literally have them just sitting on my desk here. Um, that saved people's lives. I keep it up here as a reminder. Um, you don't eat them of... as Tic Tacs? What's that? You're not eating them as Tic Tacs? No, no. Well, you make a good point. I mean, even today around the world, dysentery over the last 100 years, 200 years, has killed millions of people. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, to this point, too, like I said, with Tim's soup stuff, this also becomes a very barterable item. I can open that. I mean... My wife and I um, were in the Dominican Republic for that's where our honeymoon was. And I got some major stomach issues. And because we're, you know, on this island, I went to the like only store in the, around the area. I was like, hey, you guys got a modium? They go, yeah, it's twenty seven dollars. I was like, what? For real? And then when they handed it to me, they opened the box and took out one pill. And I was like, well, I need two at least. 
I, I paid like, I, I, don't, I think I gave him 75 bucks. I got like three, four pills or something like that. It's like, oh my, and I did it without hesitation, right? Can't enjoy my vacation while I'm sitting on the toilet. And I paid that in a, in a heartbeat. And they're probably laughing, you know, I don't know. And there's yeah. no collapse there. That's just because I'm on an island. Up. Yeah. Um, so I, one- I have, I have Imodium. I have stomach related stuff. My wife is a nurse. So I have like the world's largest uh, medical kit. I got band-aids. I've got little kids, anything that they can get into cuts and scrapes, little things like that. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, that, I mean, that's where I'm at with, with, with medicines and stuff. Um I don't know what else you guys want to, what, what, you want to get into um, firearms? This is where Tim excels. He knows a lot. Tim's got some cool stuff too. I don't know what he wants to go into, but. Well, like you even talk it, about your sword, Tim, like even that, just the thought process. Well, I think yeah, what's machete, most important. Machete is a great weapon. Oh, Tim went better than that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you need to, uh, you need proper training. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that mm. trumps your toys like if you've got you know like an ar or something but you don't know how to load it yeah what's the point what's the point right if it just gets dust what are you going to do with it if, if you've never sighted it in like you're going to have some problems right so getting training get chop training from the right people you gotta spend some money on this stuff this is just more things you have to do um it doesn't go on there jujitsu would be good for people wrestling muay thai you know, these are things you have to spend a lot of money on, but are very important if you want to have trains. So it, even if you're disarmed, like the reason why Muay Thai was invented was that's how the Thais were able to defend their country because they didn't have the wealth to have arms and uh, they made their human body arms. And that's how the history of that grew and then turned into a sport. But yeah, that's Tim a skill can, set. Tim can kick a cement bag with his shins just to give you an idea. It doesn't hurt him. Yeah. It, It'll break a, your arm if you, if you, you attack them. Yeah, like you can't take that away from me either unless they take my legs, right? Or the ability to throw something. I mean, it's another video, but you've actually used it in a real life situation, which I thought was pretty amazing. Yeah, that's, you, another, that's story. another thing. You just never know when someone's going to pull your car. So uh, I was fortunate that day they were not armed. It could have got really ugly for me. But, uh, All right, Tim, so take a step back then. What's, what would you say is more important for someone who has no arms training and no skills whatsoever, right? Uh, what would you say to them? Is it better to learn martial arts or is it better to go get like a concealed carry and get a pistol or a shotgun? Or what would you say for, I mean, what you're, Tim has a gladius, if you're not familiar, that's a Roman sword. Literally for in close combat, someone breaks into his house. You know, like Romans used it to slaughter millions of people, right? What, what, what would you say is the most important? Uh, multiple gladiuses no. uh, <laughs> it, not, well it depends like martial arts is the long road so if you want to do this for life changing getting into better shape uh discipline i would take that route but if you're looking for like quick fix go focus on one firearm like trying to get a nine mil and just drilling drilling and drilling and do that over a period of time until you can break the gun apart put it back together and have proper situational awareness while you're properly trained doing it and then you can move on to other things if that's what you want to do so you have to kind of make decision in your mind do i want it something that's going to be a little bit longer is my body good enough if i'm 50 plus years old and you know a little bit more obese maybe you want to take the gun route because the the physical part's not going to be there for you i mean someone who's been in the health and fitness world for professionally for 16 years i'm a huge advocate of martial arts been doing it most of my life um you learn a skill like tim was saying but it'll also uh, we're not even talking about it it does improve your health so the better your health is in a you know collapse style situation the less likely you're have, gonna have to go to a hospital and you also recover from everything uh at a heightened state if your starting point is from a place of health Well, I just want to point out, and it goes back to where you guys think I'm too too bearish or too negative. I don't think you're too bearish, yeah, man. I, uh, I might not be bearish enough. So I, that's one of the reasons I like talking to yeah. different people. And I don't know. It's gonna, not not to not to crush your thought there, but you go back to like Venezuela. You know, a month before it collapsed, people were going out to five star restaurants, having a no big deal, having a meal with the family. Then all of a sudden, 
it's all gone. But go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, well, that's what I was going to say. This is how quickly things change, especially yeah. every, everybody can see that now, right? Because three years ago, nobody would have imagined what the last three years were going to be like. It, no, it, and a guy, you know, and a guy that was like predicting something weird was going to happen around 2018. I never could have figured out they were going to shut us all down and have COVID and print trillions of dollars. And I never thought it was going to be that. Yeah, and and the thing that we're talking about is is if you're training in the martial arts or you're shooting in the fire range, you have to understand that it is nothing like being in the real thing. And no, I, yeah. I would say 95% of the people are going to in their pants and curl into a ball when it comes time to flip that switch. I've seen, I've seen, I've actually seen stats on that day of something like 80% of people that are in a new situation or have never, you know, you've never processed it before freeze. So like if someone comes up behind you and like goes to do a choke on you and you've never been choked or felt that, your instant reaction is literally just to kind of paralyze yourself and you don't react without that person's choking you out. But if you've been choked out a bunch, um, you go, Oh, I gotta, you know, gotta tuck my chin and try to, you know, get, get out of this and you may react right away. Yep. And that's why I've been saying all along, vote with your feet, get your feet on the ground, get situated in an area where you don't have to do any of this. And, and that's why, I mean, down in Florida, I mean, is like the opposite of New Hampshire, right? You have like <laughs> half the season, but it, you know, like New Hampshire, it gets too damn cold up here to, to survive in the winter time. And if you take away electricity down in Florida, it probably wouldn't be the greatest place without air conditioning, you know? Yeah. So it's all comes down to what you think is going to happen. And maybe some people have the attitude, well, if that goes down, then I guess I'll just die. <laughs> Um, I was looking into solar panels here and I'm just watching the price of that just explode and even just getting um, a battery, a battery right now, they're talking about like 13,000 for, for a battery, which I mean, th things just keep amping up and I wish I would have done this like six months ago. So now I'm at that crossroads. Like, do I want to get it or or not and right now i'm choosing not to because the, just the price point in comparison compared to my electric bill it's just not worth it that and rates are going up with rates going up as well from finance and it's just stacking problems so you got the underlying cost going up and the cost of service that debt is also going up which is just again i think, they that's, keep called, I think that's called a great economy tim that's what yeah. they tell me well it drives home yeah it drives home it's better to be one year early than one day late right Oh yeah. 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 I mean, I, I like to, I would love using the toilet paper example of COVID. Uh, um, I mean, I had, I had friends. I, I, I think I posted it on our Patreon. I had friends. He's a hockey buddy. Got down to, he's got a wife and two kids got down to one, one roll. I gave him two and it was like, I gave him a million dollars. Right. Like he literally hugged me. I'm like, dude, it's just, yeah, just take it. Like <laughs> I have more if you need it. Well, we're down. Zoom is giving us three minutes here. So um, um the, I, th I would say the only thing we didn't touch on um is community and you know if you that's i would say is one of the downsides to moving with your feet um you know you go to another country and i'm not trying to be racist but if you're whitey in a non-white country mm -hmm. and stuff gets mm -hmm. weird you might become ostracized and become a target you may not know the language now dave i mean you've been in uh, mexico for a long time so i'm sure you're more well versed but a guy like me just up and a move in there, I'm not sure that that's the best thing for me. I'm more apt, I think, to move to an area where there's less dense population and or, and or family. Um, that's well, kind of goes, my take. Well, this goes to everything we're saying. There's different levels of preparation, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's the superficial levels where you can get 100 cans of soup, right? Any idiot can do that in, in pretty easily. Or... You know, if we're starting to talk about training or getting to the ideal situation, these all these all take time and effort. And for those people who don't even, you know, who have their head in their sand or they're like, la, 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 la. Well, you know, I mean, that's kind of what the three of us have been trying to do. I mean, Tim and I started our YouTube channel up. I think it was like 2010 when we started talking about how stuff was going to get weird. Um, 
and all we're trying to do is, you know, just talk about it, wake people up. And it's, um, I, I've had the, the positive experience of waking up personally, like, and I feel really good about it. Eight plus like good friends. And it's amazing to watch the transformation because it's like you're negative. They're saying to me, you're negative, 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 negative. And then I'm when they, when the light switches on their whole life flips and you know, I, if things got super weird tomorrow, I could, I could die tomorrow and be happy just about that. You know, I feel, I feel good about it. So yeah. That's, that's my, that's my two cents. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've had the same boat. I've been able fortunate enough to explain my, my side to people and have them just be totally in the dark to it and then finally be receptive to it. And uh, I can't tell you how many people from precious metals to cryptocurrencies that I've been able to help and able to help protect themselves um, so they've taken it into their own possession. Now they are the captain of their own ship. And if they crash, they crash. And uh, if it goes on to bigger and better things, I think it will, then they can enjoy that fruit by themselves. I mean, I, I think at, I think at the end of the day, then like we don't know what's going to happen. And maybe there is no collapse and everything just keeps going the way it's going. I know we got one minute. Um, but being at least aware and having run through some of the scenarios in your head, I think is a much, much better position than at the last minute you're filled with fear and then you have to make a life altering decision. To me, that would be the literally the worst case scenario, because when you're in a state of fear, your cognitive abilities are in decline and you will make the wrong choice. Yeah. And I mean, this is why they like to keep you on a treadmill because you're too busy trying to survive and you're not even thinking about these things yeah the, the rat race yep hey well guys well hey uh hope you have a great holiday Thank and you, man. um thanks for doing this i enjoy talking to you as always thanks for being a chat. member in our patreon group too appreciate it yep yep and, see you guys uh, hey have a great day take care yeah see bye you. thanks guys bye